The Tai Chi Sword Standard 42 Form is the most popular Tai Chi Sword form. The movements of the Tai Chi Sword are graceful and steady, with Qi penetrated into the sword. The connections are smooth and natural. It looks gentle, but embedded with firmness, which makes the internal force flow along with the sword to merge the sword and the body into one.
Stand upright, feet together, relax and concentrate on Dantian. Take a step to the left. Relax the body continuously. Raise up the arms. Rotate to the right. Form empty step and hold a ball. Take step and raise fingers. Brush and point forward. Form empty step and cross wrists. Take a step and move the arms down. Take another step and raise up the arms. Stand with feet together. Pass the sword to the right hand and point the sword. Take a bow step backwards and cut obliquely. Rotate right heel. Sword performs a horizontal circle, then a vertical circle and chop. Lift left knee and stand on right leg. Rotate the sword. Take a left bow step and parry the sword. Rotate the left heel. Sword performs a big circle and then cut upward. Sword performs a big circle. Take a right bow step and cut the sword upward. Pull the sword to the left, and then pull it to the right. Stand on left leg and lift the right knee. Hold sword in both hands. Pull in and then thrust and kick with right heel. Take a jump step and thrust sword. Rotate right heel. Turn body and thrust sword down. Take a bow step and cut sword horizontally. Pull to the left. Pull to the right. Hold the sword. And then flash the sword up obliquely. Press sword down. Bend knees and form a cross step. Raise the body and hold the sword. Step forward and draw three circles with sword. Sword performs a big circle and thrust out. Stand on right leg and lift the left knee. Left foot takes a step backward. Sword sways to the left and then intercept to the right. Hold the sword. Pull and cut to the right. And then pull and cut. To the left. Take a cross step and intercept. Then take a bow step and chop sword. Intercept and then raise sword to defend. Form an empty step. Rotate the left heel. Right foot takes a step, and then thrust the sword forward. Put feet together, and the sword performs a big circular movement in front of the body. Lift right knee. Sword goes up, and fingers point down. Kick with right toes, 
and point the sword backwards. Move the sword to the left, and then cut horizontally to the right. Form a crouch step. Sword moves to the left, and then moves down, threads out, and then thrusts out. Rotate the heels. Stand on right leg. Block sword. Kick and point out. Lift left knee and point the sword down. Thread the sword fingers backwards. Take a crouch step, and sweep the sword. Take a bow step, and intercept to the right. Take another bow step and intercept to the left. Stomp a foot, and pull sword to the waist. Thrust sword. Open the sword and take a step. Wave the sword and take a cover step. Take a bow step. Cut the sword to the right. Open the sword and take a step. Wave the sword and take a cover step. Take a bow step. Cut the sword to the left. Rotate the sword. Take a bow step and chop the sword. Cross step and parry the sword. Raise right leg backward and block the sword. Form a T step and point the sword. Take a whole step and push the sword. Take a cross step, rotate the feet. Sword performs a circular movement and then a sweeping action. Stand on one leg and raise the sword. Take a left step and parry the sword to the left. Take a right step and parry the sword to the right. Take steps forward and point the sword. Take a step and cut sword backward. Cross step and tilt the sword. Take a bow step and thrust sword backward. Rotate the left heel and turn the sword. Turn body and thrust the sword. Sword performs a circular movement in front of the body. Lift left knee and lift sword. Take a left step and pierce the sword. Take a sway step, a close step, a sway step, and then a close step again. Wave leg and wave sword. Take a bow step. Block the sword and point the fingers to the left. Take a bow step and thrust the sword. Pull the sword in and pass the sword to the left hand. Drop the sword fingers down and stand up. Put feet together, feel relaxed and peaceful. Relax your body. Concentrate on Dantian. Take a step. Toe first, then entire foot. Relax continuously. Rise up. Rotate. Hold the ball. 
Raise up your fingers. Rush, point forward. Take a step. Draw a circle. Take a step. Draw another circle. Close. Pass the sword. Point forward. Sinking down. Panda stretch. Rotate. Chop. Big circle. Carry. Big circle. Close your body. Cut upwards. Big circle. Take step. Scooping the moon from the bottom of the sea. Pull to the left. Pull to the right. Tiger hold its head. Pull in. Kick and thrust. Go. Jump step. Thrust. Pull to the left. Pull to the body. Turn. Thrust. Hold the ball. Goose spreads its wings. Pull to the left. Pull to the right. Hold the sword. Take step. Press in. Hold the sword. Triple rings. One, two, three. Big circle. Birds returning at dusk. Dragon sweeping its tail. Hold the sword. Pull and cut to the right. Take step. Pull and cut to the left. Cross step. Take step. A chop. Intercept. And raise up the sword. Turn. Swap. Big circle. Tiger stand on one leg. Point the sword. Close. Open. Pull to the left. Dragon diving onto the ground. Thread the sword. Thrust. A bear kick. Point. Point the sword. Swallow skimmy above the water. Rotate. Search for snake. Search for snake. Stomp. Thrust. Hold the sword. Open. Wave sword like clouds. Open. Wave sword like clouds. Comet, chasing the moon. Chop. Phoenix, turning back. Point the sword. Pull. Push the mountain. Cross step. Sweeping. Stand with one leg. Harry. Harry. Point forward. Cut backward. Tilt the sword. Raise up. Shooting the tiger. Thrust. Eagle spreads. 
its wings. Bagua steps. Five steps. Lotus kick. Hold to the left. Thrust to the front. Pui. Pass the sword. Press down. Straighten up the knees. Send the energy back to Dantian. Closing fold. Feel relaxed and peaceful. Now, I would like to introduce paragraph one. Before we start, I would like to introduce how to hold the sword in the ready position. Put the guard of the sword in your left palm. The thumb of your left hand on the one side of the guard. Middle finger, ring finger, and little finger on the other side of the guard. Index finger put on the handle. Hold the sword stably and comfortably. Tip of the sword point up. Now, is the sword finger of your right hand. Put the first joint of your thumb on the first joint of your ring finger and little finger. Index finger and middle finger together point forward. Put your sword finger along the side of your body. Put your feet together. That's the ready position. Relax your body and concentrate on Dantian. Feel peaceful and ready. Now, take step, shoulder width, and keep relax your body continuously. Raise up to the left and then rotate horizontally to the right. Hold the ball, take step, go bow step, raise up your fingers, catch up step, rotate to the left, ball over the foot, and right ball over the foot. Rush your knee, point forward. Now that's the commencing form. When we do the commencing form, we already can see the waist guide the movement as a pivot. And also we can see the movement, make curve movement or circle movement. That's the key of our Tai Chi practice. In the sword, it's the same. We always use your waist to guide the movement always do the curve movement or the circle movement in the practice. We'll do this one again and you pay attention to those curve and circle movements and the waist guiding as a pivot. Ready position. Concentrate on Dan Tian. Take a step. Raise up. Rotate. Use your waist. Hold it. Go, raise up, catch up step, brush, doing a semicircle, and point forward. Take step, open, another curve line movement. Take step, bow step, another curve line movement. Pass the sword, 
point forward. So, point forward. Put the feet together. Quite common. Uh, some people will raise up one heel. That's wrong. Feet together. Both feet on the ground. Solid. Point the sword. Eyes look at the tip of the sword. Mind concentrate on the tip of the sword. Then the energy will follow your mind and eyes flow to the tip of the sword. From this movement, I would like to mention the mind concentration. The mind concentration can help the energy flow, can help us to feel the energy flow and get a good sense of a relaxed feeling and also peaceful feeling. When we finish, we also feel more energetic if we have the mind concentrated in the practice. So it's very important to keep our mind together in our practice, clear other thoughts from the mind. Right. So after point the sword, sinking down, take step, go, panda stretch. You can see the waist guide of the movement. Slowly the sword move a circle and cut obliquely. The feet adjust to make a bow step. Keep going. Horizontal circle and vertical circle. A chop. And the hand is doing a curve movement. Then you can see another circle, horizontal, another circle, chop, and another curve movement of the hand. So from those movements, you can get more and more understanding of the rotate with the circle movement and curve movement and also use the waist to guide the movement. I will display these two again and we will try to feel what uh, we just mentioned. Ah. Point the sword, hold, panda stretch and keep going, circle, Curve and chop. Do another circle. Parry. So that's another circle. Close to your body and parry is to block opponent's weapon away. The tip of the sword stay on the midline. Hand of the sword, chest level. Parry. And feel stable, comfortable, and the fingers just go up naturally, obliquely above your forehead. So that's uh, our first paragraph. Now, I would like to introduce paragraph two. We start from parry. Rotate the left heel, do a big circle close to your body, cut upwards. When we do the circles in our sword practice, quite often we need to let the sword close to your body and then cut up. The reason is because this way, we feel the sword is much easier to be handled. In our sword practice, we always say we would like to feel the sword is the extension of your arm. And we would like to merge the sword and the body into one. If we want to get that feeling, we need to follow this principle. Let the circle 
close to your body, and then cut upward. Now, we do again this side. Parry, big circle, cut upward. Another big circle, take step, scooping the moon from the bottom of the sea. So that's uh, two big circles. To get a better feeling of these circles, I would like to connect the previous circle together to show and explain. After chop, do a big circle, parry, another big circle close to your body, cut up. And then another big circle, take step, scooping the moon from the bottom of the sea. Those big circles can help the whole Tai Chi sword form practice go smoothly and gracefully. If all the movements can flow smoothly, then the energy flow will be smooth. And then we will feel relaxed, peaceful, and energetic in the practice and after practice. So it is essential to make all the movements smooth and graceful. That is going to make you feel happy and energetic in the whole process and afterwards. Now, after scooping, pull to the left, pull to the right, very relaxed and comfortable. Land on the heel, tiger hold its head. Bend your knees, feel comfortable, relaxed. Pull in, kick, and thrust. Use the momentum, jump step, thrust. Now this one is called wild horse, leap over the creek. We try to get that momentum and smooth flow, chasing and attacking the opponents. Have a look again. Tiger hold its head, pull in a little bit, kick and thrust, go, jump step, thrust. Now I would like to introduce the jump step. Jump step is a jump. There is one moment. Both legs, or both feet are off the ground. When you land the left foot, we land front part of the foot first, and then entire foot. At the same time, lift up the right foot. So get that jump in. Feeling. Okay, now I would like to demonstration again and uh, have a look at the jump step. Kick and thrust, go. Jump step, thrust. Pull to the left, pull to the body. Turn and thrust. Bees entering the caves. This movement, we will do again from here. Thrust, you rotate the right heel as much as possible. That can make it much easier to turn later. So rotate as much as possible. At the same time, the sword move to the left. Do a horizontal circle. Pull in to the body. Push the toe and rotate the ball over the right foot. Push and thrust. The left hand goes up naturally. Put 
obliquely in front of your forehead. And thrust bees entering the caves. I'll do this movement again. Aft. Wild horse leap over the creek. Pull to the left horizontally. Rotate your right heel. Pull in. Turn. Thrust. Bees entering the caves. So, this is the paragraph two. Now, I would like to introduce the third paragraph. We start from bees entering the caves. Hold the sword. Goose spreads the wings. Horizontally, the sword doing a circle. Gentle and relaxed. Use your waist to guide the movement. Again. Hold the sword. Slow and gentle. Use your waist. Guide the movement. Then pull the sword to the left. Rotate the heel. And pull the sword to the right. Cross your leg. Hold the sword. Take step. And flash the sword. As you can see, this form is very different from the others. Slow, gentle, and suddenly, we have a very fast and powerful movement. That is actually the feature of the Chen style Tai Chi. So in this standard 42 form sword practice, we have three Chen style Tai Chi forms here. This is one of them. The feature of Chen style, one feature is the change of the rhythm. In the Chen style, it's not always even and stable. It can be slow and then fast. When it's slow and quiet, you will feel it's like not moving. It's like quiet as a mountain. When it's fast, you will feel it's like a flash. And it can be very powerful, like thunderbolt. So there is a change of the rhythm. Make it very interesting. Another feature of the Chen style is Quite often, we need to wind up. It's like winding up a spring. To a certain degree, winding, winding, to a certain degree, and then the spring has to come out with a burst of power. So winding up, cultivate the energy, and suddenly, <clears throat> a burst of the power. So that's the feature of Chen Stao Tai Chi. Chen style Tai Chi is earlier than the Yang style. It is closer to the martial arts. The Yang style, the founder of Yang style, actually learned the Tai Chi from the Chen style master. Right. So the three Chen style movements in this 42 standard form will make the whole form very interesting and a little bit change of the rhythm. I'll do this movement again. You have a look to see the speed change and the winding up of the movement. I start from the bees entering the caves. Hold the ball. Go, go, spread the winds. Pull to the left, winding up. Pull to the right, winding up. Hold the sword. Take step. <laughs> Flash. Now, 
cross step, press the sword down. Some people will say this is very difficult. You cannot bend that far. But actually, if you practice a few more times, you will realize this movement is not as difficult as you think. Majority of people can feel very easy to bend down. This is to press opponents' weapons and prevent the attack. Now, stand up, hold the sword, triple rings. One, two, three, triple rings. You can see we did three steps. One step, land the heel first, and the entire foot. Second step, heel first, the entire foot. Third step, heel first, the entire foot. On one line. Each step, when we do the, each step, we do a circle of the sword. If we want to do these triple rings well, another thing I would like to mention is we need to relax our wrist, shoulder, and elbow. Grasp the sword loosely, not tightly. Let the sword do circles naturally and comfortably. I do lots of practice. Relax the arm, shoulder, elbow, wrist, loosely hold the sword, and let the sword jaw circles. All right, we will do again. Press down, hold the sword, triple in. One, two, three, three rings. And then, big circle, Trust. Birds returning at the dusk. Feel confident? Bend your knees. Use your waist, doing a big circle, and thrust. That's uh, the birds returning at the dusk. So that's the uh, key points of the previous paragraph. Now, I'd like to introduce paragraph four. We start from birds returning at the dusk. Feel confident, bend your knee, and take step. Use your waist to guide the movement. Dragon sweeping its tail. Very relaxed and gentle movement. Turn, relax. Hold the sword. Take step, bow step, pull and cut to the right. Then take another bow step, pull and cut to the left. Very relaxed and comfortable. Now, cross step, intercept, and then a big chop. Even and slow, smooth chop. When we finish the chop, we feel the sword face to the front, fingers face to the right, feel comfortable and very stable. Now, do another intercept and raise up the sword. Defense, your head. That's another intercept. Aft, raise up the sword. We have a long one. Land the left heel, turn body. See, the sword didn't move. It's a, just the heel is turning and body is turning. The sword didn't really move. Take step, thrust, big thrust. Big circle, anti-clockwise. Put your feet together. And pull up the sword and point down the fingers. 
then do a kick. As you can see, this is a long movement. Change the direction, big circle, and a big kick in the end. To make this movement go smoothly, we need to be patient, relaxed, feel confident, and then we can do it properly. We'll do again this one. Huh? Raise up the sword. Land the heel, turn. Big thrust. And big circle. Put your feet together. Pull up and point down. Feel the sword. There, there is glue, sticky glue between the sword and the finger. Pull the sword up and the fingers point down. When you feel comfortable and relaxed, then kick and point the sword. Look at the tip of the sword. All right. So that's uh, paragraph four. Now, I would like to introduce paragraph five. We start from stand on one leg, kick, and point the sword. Close, open horizontally, pull to the left, sinking down, dragon diving onto the ground, thrust the sword in the end. This movement is very demanding because uh, it is a crouch step. You need to bend quite low, but it does give the lower part of the body a good exercise, good stretch. So we try to do it properly, we'll get lots of benefit from this movement. All right, we'll do again and can stand better. Point and kick. Close, slowly close, slowly and evenly cut. To the right, pull to the left, sinking down the sword, turn the sword, dragon diving onto the ground. Thread the sword and thrust in the end. Rotate the right heel, shift the weight on the right leg, rise up, kick, bare kick, and point the sword. As you can see, bare kick, and then point the sword. These two movements are not easy to do because stand on one leg, for a long time, you need to feel very confident, very patient, and do it properly. When we stand on one leg, we always bend the knee a little bit, feel very confident, and then point. And point the sword. Look at the tip of the sword, concentrate on the tip of the sword. You will realize after you practice day by day, once one day you feel confident with those movements, especially this part, then you will realize you are in a different level of balance. So that can build up the strength of the leg and good sense of balance. It will give us lots of benefit in our daily life. That is why we say Tai Chi is one of the best exercises for building up our balance to prevent the fall. Now we continue. After point the sword, thread the fingers backwards and cut horizontally to the left. It's called swallow skimmy above the water. That is to attack opponents. 
knee, ankle, lower part. That's a skimming. Just remember to do it very smoothly, slowly, and do the crouch step properly. Aft, skimming, rotate, search for snake. Another search for snake. Stomp, thrust. As you can see, this is another chain style form. Winding up by searching snakes, and then deliver the power with a burst of the power. So that makes the whole form powerful and interesting. Now let's have another look and try to feel the flavor of the chain style. Aft, skimming above the water, rotate, search, search, winding up, stop, thrust. Deliver the power completely. So that's the introduction of our Paragraph 5. Now, I would like to introduce paragraph six. We start from bow step and thrust the sword. Hold the sword, open, wave sword. Pull and cut to the right. Take step, carve step, wave the sword. Pull and cut to the left. This is one of the difficult ones in the whole form. Need lots, lots of coordination. There is a little trick to do it properly, this one. I will introduce now. After thrust, hold the sword. When we take step, we open the sword at the same time. Remember this, it will be easier. And then, cover step, cover, and the sword goes to the, in front of the face. Wave sword. And then take step, pull and cut. Pull in, open, take step. Cross step, wave again. And take step, pull and cut to the left. I hope this is going to make it clear. The open and cross, open and cross. I would like to introduce the cover step in this form also. You may still remember the jump step in the previous one, the wild horse leap over the creek. That is a kick. Go, jump, and thrust. There is a jump step. In this one, cover step is very similar. We can actually do a little jump also. Do a little jump. So, land the front part of the foot first, then entire foot. At the same time, lift up the other foot. There is one moment both feet are off the ground. So, cover step. Yeah. Now, let's pay attention to the steps, to the cover step, but I will do the whole form together. Huh? The thrust, hold, open, cover step, pull, and cut to the right. Open. Cover step, pull and cut to the left. All right, now we rotate the sword, take step, a big chop, 
smooth, even, and stable comet chasing the moon. Crossed parry. Parry is a defense, block the opponent's weapon away. Use the front part of the blade. Cross and stand on one leg. Phoenix turning back. Feel stable, comfortable, make the whole movement graceful. All right, I will connect these two movements together again. After the wave sword like clouds, rotate the sword, a big chop, chop, and then cross step. We start from open, close, and now open again. Phoenix, turning back, look backwards. Point the sword, T-step and point the sword. Pui. Push the mountain. So this is another chain style form, as you can see. The T-step and point of the sword is to wind up. Push the mountain is to deliver the power. So as I mentioned before, chain style we need to wind up and delivery, and also the speed can be a little bit different. So point is slightly faster than usual, and then push is a quick delivery. I will show you again these two movements. Phoenix turning back, point slightly faster, pui, push the mountain. There is one more thing I would like to mention, is the steps. You can see this step has a little bit of sliding, and then push another sliding of the left foot. So push the mountain actually is doing a little bit sliding <coughs> of the step. In the Yang style Tai Chi, we don't do those slidings. We say the Yang style Tai Chi walk, we walk like a cat. Land one part of the foot first, and the entire foot. One part of the foot first, and the entire foot. We don't make any noise. But in the Chen style Tai Chi, we are different. We have lots of sliding, sliding, sliding. And in this one is sliding, sliding. Or sometimes do the stomp, <laughs> like the previous one. So very different steps. So we know the difference, and then we can do it properly. All right? So we do once more of this movement, and then we finish this paragraph. Again, aft, phoenix, turning back, point, pull, push the mountain. So that's uh, paragraph six. Now, I would like to introduce paragraph seven. Start from push the mountain. Cross step. Sweeping, stand on one leg. This movement involves lots of steps, little movements of the foot, and a circle of the sword, and then stand on one leg. We need to make all the movements stable and clear. 
have another look and see how to make it stable and clear. Cross step, rotate the left heel and the right ball over the foot. The same time, anti-clockwise. Do a circle of the sword, sweeping. Stand on the right leg. Stand up. Parry to the left. Parry to the right. And take step. Point forward. Four steps involved in this movement. We make sure these four steps stable and clear also. Start from stand on one leg. Uh, step one, parry to the left. Step two, parry to the right. Step three, and step four, point to the front. Look at the tip of the sword. Mind concentrate on the tip. Raise up the sword. Cut backwards. Cut backwards is to cut with the front part of the blade to block the opponent's weapon away. And then cross step, tilt the sword. Tilt the sword is to put the energy on the front part of the blade. Tilt. This movement is very similar to press down the sword. I mentioned it's not as difficult as it looks. This one the same. It's that low, but actually, majority of people will find it's easy, easy to get done. Tilt the sword, rise up, shooting the tiger. The sword and the right leg almost on one line. The most common mistake is some people shoot the hand face to the wrong direction. The sword is this direction, that's wrong. The sword needs to shoot this way. This can make it more, much more powerful. Shoot. Right. After the shooting, rotate the left heel, turn the sword, thrust. To do this turn and thrust properly, we need to make sure when we rotate the left heel, we need to rotate as much as possible. That can help we turn the whole, whole body easily. We'll do again, thrust, rotate the left heel as much as possible, at the same time rotate the sword, and let the sword lie down on the web of your right hand. Turn the body, thrust, to the corner, a bow step. All right. So the coordination of the turn of the left heel and also the turn of the body, the turn of the sword and lie down on the whip and then move and thrust all need to be coordinated and connected smoothly. We'll do once more and try to see how smoothly it is connected. Shooting, rotate. Thrust. So that's uh, paragraph seven. Now, I would like to introduce the last paragraph 
in our Taiji soul. Start from thrust. Big circle in front of your body. Ego spreads its wings. Feel very stable and comfortable. Ego stand. When we do the big circle, the sword finger via the flat side of the sword. Move opposite way from the sword. So again, you can see, rotate and open. Eyes look at the tip of the sword. Feel stable and relaxed. And take step, another step, another step, another step, another step. Five steps. This is a bagua step. One step, sway step, the right foot doing a sway step. Left foot doing a close step. A sway step, a close step. Another sway step, another close step. And you are walking on the circle. And the steps along the circle. In the Bagua Pan, this is very common, Bagua Pan, in the martial arts. So we call it Bagua step. When we do those steps, make sure the steps are very agile. The body, very stable, full of energy inside. So our movement, after the first peers out, the first step, the rest of the steps, the sword didn't move. The sword is just stay there. Just stay there. And the fingers follow the handle of the sword. Didn't move also. So only the steps are moving and the body is following. The sword and the fingers are following. That's the Bagua step. The direction of the step. If we are practicing in a square room or a rectangle room, our steps usually step to the corner. So for example, when we step, start here, we step to the corner. And then step to the second corner of the room. The third corner of the room, fourth corner of the room, and then to the first corner of the room again. Bagua step. Now, lotus kick. Lotus kick. Lotus kick is like kicking like lotus leaf swaying in the wind. The leg, the right leg, kick from the left to the right. From the left to the right. And then pull in in the end. Left to the right, pull in, take step, a bow step in the end. The sword move from the right side to the left side. It's the opposite. So the leg from left to the right. And sword from right to the left, opposite. That is lotus kick. We'll do again. Lotus kick. Landy. Make a bow step and point to the left. That is a lotus kick. We we'll like to, in, uh, to connect these two movements together. Aft ego spreads its wings. Here's the step, go, continue, continue, lotus kick, point to the left. 
after Lotus Kick, we're now nearly the end of the form, thrust to the front, pulling to the body, pass the sword to the left hand, and then press down. Closing form. Put your feet together. These last few movements looks very easy, but we need to get a feeling, a good feeling of completion, because that's the end of our sword practice. We want to collect the energy back after all those activities. The energy goes up and down, in and out. Now it's time to come back to the body. And then we send the energy back to Dantian, to its home. In that way, we feel energetic and peaceful. We will do again. After Lotus Kick, thrust to the front, pass the sword, and press down, send the energy back to Dantian. When we point the sword finger down, the same time, raise up, up, straighten your knees. So, fingers goes down, knees straightened. And then, you put your feet together to finish. So, we'll do this one once more, just try to get that good completion feeling. Aft, lotus kick, thrust, pull in, and energy comes back to the body, send the energy back to Dantian, put your feet together, concentrate on Dantian, feel peaceful and relaxed. <laughs>